everybody. Welcome back to the Fumble Live. We have some updates for you about the NBA season start, which is happening on December 22nd. We're going to be getting into all of that. But first, make sure you subscribe to our channel, tap the bell for notifications, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment below. Here's the Fumble squad, the lovely ladies of the Fumble. I'm Devin Howard. You can find me on Instagram as at Devin Howard. Jackie. What's up, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Jackie Ray. You can follow me everywhere at J Ray the Fanatic. Hey, y'all. It's your girl, Britt Johnson. You guys can follow me on all social media at I am Britt Johnson. Hey, ladies. What day is it today? It's Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. <laughs> 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 I wonder how, how that day. sounds. How are you feeling good? <laughs> I am, I was so hungover about like midday, so I kind of had to call it about midday, um, but I'm feeling good now. I watched the game last night. You know that there was one thing that I oh, wanted on my birthday. birthday. All of my birthday wishes came true. This is like one of the best birthdays ever. I'm so excited. So yes, I am feeling <laughs> really good, really happy right now. <laughs> Yeah, Jackie, the birthday gods were definitely smiling down on you. I knew Finally. you would be celebrating last night. <laughs> yes. that, was so, that was so good. Well, happy yes. birthday. I'm glad that you had a great birthday. Um, let's get into the news, you guys. This first uh, update about the NBA uh, season start is there's kind of a lot of information here. So um, the Lakers are expecting to play on opening day, which will be December 22nd, like I mentioned. But one official involved with the Lakers player health development is concerned. He doesn't think that a lot of the guys will be playing at all during the entire first month of the season. And if they do play, they're not going to be going all out. Um, obviously, there are a number of concerns with this shortened off season, one being a spike in injuries uh, for one health official. He's particularly concerned about soft tissue injuries. Um, another talked about how with the reopening of NBA arenas, players are going to have to be traveling back and forth, and that's going to affect and shorten the recovery periods that everybody has, uh, especially between flights. He says that that could spell disaster. He said, I'd be more worried about travel because we saw in the bubble not having travel really helped guys recover. So I don't know if it's actually the amount of games, but it's just the fact that you're getting to 2 a.m. in the morning and you're traveling now. That becomes a bigger issue. On top of all of that, the accelerated schedule also affects the length of this season's free agency period. As we've talked about, um, incoming rookies are set to be drafted next week, but they'll only have a month to get settled in with their new teams before they make their debuts. Uh, and then there are some official dates that have been set. So draft day set for November 18th. Free agency starts at 6 p.m. on November 20th. Free agency free agent signing can begin at 12.01 p.m. on November 22nd and then training camps open on December 1st. So those are some set dates. Everything is happening on a very fast-paced schedule. So, Jackie, I obviously have to ask you about the Lakers. What is your reaction to hearing that some players may be sitting out for the entire first month of the regular season? I think that's smart. I think that's, um, that's what they should do. I think when you're talking about, because you're, you have to play the long game. You can't play the short game. Um, up in, right now, we don't even know if there's going to be fans in the stand, so it's not like we're going to be letting down anybody that's going to see their favorite player. But you definitely have to play for the long game. And going right back right now for the Lakers, you know, when we're talking about LeBron and, and Dwight, you know, we still got to work out ADs. Kind of, like, there's a lot we have to do, you know. So I just, I don't, you don't. December is just a wash, you know what I mean? It's just if they do play uh, LeBron, like he said on his HBO special, you know, as President Barack Obama encouraged him to do, he will be cherry picking his games probably for the first two to three months because you have to make sure that you're healthy for the long haul. The worst thing that could possibly happen is you come back too soon, you get injured in like that first three games, one of those first three games, and now you're out for the season. You know what I mean? That would be the absolute worst thing that could happen, not only to the Lakers, but to any team. So you definitely have to, you have to play the long game. So I think it's smart. I think that, you know, we don't see any of the stars in December, and then they start cherry picking after that. So I think that's smart. Well, that kind of leads me into my question for Britt here, because with this shortened season, these early games matter more than they usually would. So what do you think, Britt, is going to be the outcome of big-name players sitting out? How do you think it's going to impact the season? 
Um, I think people aren't going to watch as much as they did before, um, especially those first games. I literally every single year go to, whether it's the Lakers or the Clippers, I go to opening day games. Like I literally posted something a couple uh, days ago. It was like my flashback from like four years ago or three years ago. And it was the Lakers and Rockets first of the season game and the and I was like pointing out I'm like the season just ended and like normally the season would have just been beginning just to show how crazy it is um but I think people aren't going to be watching um like usually opening day games are like usually the N NBA has like that first week or two of basketball games that everybody watches and then we don't watch mm -hmm. in November because we're all into football and then the start of um the NCAA and then playing, and then in March, or and then in December, our reintroduction back to basketball is that Christmas week game or that Christmas day game. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we'll we'll play around a little bit, and then we won't watch again till after All Star break. Like that's just yeah. how people watch basketball. There's usually 82 games in a, or there's 82 games in a season. We don't watch all of them, you know. And so um, to have that moment or whatever where we're gonna have those weird breaks that we're usually normally supposed to be watching. I think we're just gonna have a whole long break where nobody's watching and it's gonna be just like the NFL was. Like Jackie said, hey, these for, uh, for NFL season, these first four games don't matter because people, right. this is like the preseason. It's not going to be right, like we normally see. And what we did see is all those injuries come out. Now we're literally, I'm like we talked about earlier yesterday, my Cowboys are playing with their fourth string quarterback and we're in the middle of the season. This is what's going to happen when we get players that come back too early and start early for the NBA. We're going to get the time where we actually should all be watching and we're going to have, you know, the benches bench playing, you know? So mm -hmm. um, obviously I think mm -hmm. it makes sense to have players like sit out, but I think it's going to, it's just, it's just sounds all bad to me. It's going to be, and weird to watch and I'm not going to know when to take my breaks and when to watch and so probably half the time I'm just not going to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah and yeah. I think that a lot of people are going to be feeling the same way that you are. Oh wow there's, there's a really bad accent. Bad. Really bad. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Okay. Ooh, that's bad. I'm just going to go into the next one. I don't know if you guys want to mute um, and see if that helps at all. <laughs> so I'll just go into the next update and then we'll go to questions. So LaMarcus Aldridge threw a shade at lazy players. So on Twitter, he pointed out the difference between players who had been in the league or played in the league for two years and those who had been in the league for over 10. And he said it's finding enjoyment and putting in the work. He tweeted, quote, if you don't enjoy putting in work, something is wrong with you. That's the difference in playing two years in the league and 10 plus years. People were wondering who this tweet was directed towards, and he said, nobody in particular. So, Britt, going to you first, do you agree that you always have to be happy to put in the work, or are some players just naturally gifted and therefore don't have to work quite as hard? Uh, I mean, I think it depends. Everybody's a little bit different in that aspect, but, you know, the great Deion Sanders, stay ready so you never have to get ready kind of stuff, you know, like um, in him, you know, or not him, but like players just really thinking about um, loving what they do. I remember talking about something like, oh, if you, that story about like, oh, if you want to be a writer, if you wake up every day and you, the first thing on your mind is to write, then you're a writer. And I think that's the same thing with like athletes as well. Like if you, all you think about is basketball and all you think about whatever, mm -hmm. then you're a basketball player. And, but I do think the older players get, they just have, you know, it's a moment in time. Things start to change. People get families. People have other things they need to worry about. Like, especially when you're getting towards the end of your career, you're starting to think of what do I, what am I supposed to do after this? Because, you know, sports, unlike other careers, like I could start being a writer at age 18 and I can be a writer until I die, but you can't be a basketball player until you die. So I think it's, that part is different. And so I don't think the age thing matters is if you care about basketball or not i just think people change and people are realizing they're getting towards the end of their career and they can't just focus only on basketball or now they do have children or they do have a wife that they need to put energy into as well and that gets more and more important in the basketball side of it gets less important during that time so did they not ever have a love for basketball because now their priorities are different no i don't think that um and i think you don't have to at, at a point it does become 
it's your job. It's not, it's not for the love of basketball anymore. It was for the love when you were a little kid and you would be playing outside um, with, you know, a car shining on the, on the court, like the lights from a car shining on the court, just so you could stay out there and keep playing until like one, two o'clock in the morning time. So um, that, that just changes just because they're, they have other priorities now, I think. Mm. Okay, yeah. And then, um, Jackie, I know that LaMarcus says that this tweet wasn't directed at anyone in particular, but do you think that he secretly had somebody in mind when he posted it? Was he thinking of anyone in particular who maybe took the easy or lazy way out? I actually don't think he was talking about anyone specific. Like, I don't think he was directing it at, like, one individual. I think he probably was talking about the younger guys. Um, because I know now that we live in a world of social media, like when you, even when we see, you know, Clay and he'll be working out with his dog or we'll see, we'll see all these guys that have been in the league for a while. And a lot of their social media is them doing workouts or is them in doing some sort of strength training or practicing in some way. But then, you know, these younger guys and, and they're doing these TikToks and, you know, and it's, it's, some of them are painful. We know Kyle Kuzma's TikTok is very, very painful. And, <laughs> you know, so I think he's just talking about those guys. Like, you know, especially especially if you are, are younger in the league and you haven't quite proven yourself that maybe, you know, put in the work. Let us see you putting in the work. Um, but I think I agree with Britt, too. I think he knows that, um, especially when you get older, because there is that there there is that window. I feel like a lot of guys, when they come into the league and they're young and they're having a good time and, and things of that nature, they don't put in as much of work as, as we would probably like, like because they've made it and they feel great. They're, you know, when you're young, you feel like you're invincible anyway. You don't feel like you have to put it that much work. And then there comes that point where you're like, oh, damn, I'm not getting the accolades that I want. I'm not getting the recognition that I want. I'm not actually defending the way that I want. And then you put in this work, this crazy amount of work, and then you're like at the prime. That's when people are usually at the prime of their career. And then they get married and they have kids and then they realize, you know, the injury that maybe would have taken them two weeks to recover from when they first came in the league is now taking them four to six weeks. They're not the same human being anymore. So now they, they're, their focus tends to dwindle away a, a little bit. So there is a window of time in there where I think everyone gets hyper-focused. Um, but I think if I would have to guess who he's talking about, I would probably say it's the rookies and the young people that are just on social media doing a little too much sometimes. <laughs> I think you bring up something. Oh, go ahead, Brent. Go ahead. No, no, go. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think you bring up a um, an interesting point, Jackie, with uh, social media and the way it permeates every aspect of society and of our personal lives. I think that there is more mm -hmm. of an opportunity to broad broadcast what you are doing in your free time. So maybe rookies, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, were also doing silly dances and uh, with right. their friends in a living room, but they weren't posting about it on social media. So it does create this sense that, like, uh, you know, maybe they aren't taking their their role as an athlete very seriously, but also there could be just a shift in perspective that these younger guys have because you're right, they feel like they've made it. So I guess it's kind of hard mm -hmm. to tell in that way. Britt, what were you going to say? I just was going to, um, I always go to this quote because it's one of my favorite things from uh, Mike Singletary when he said, um, in the league, there's no winners, there's only survivors. And I do think that there's like a point, I think, where people realize like, I just have to put this before everything else if I want it to like have longevity and which is why we see a lot of athletes that you know were high school stars or college stars and then they don't transition into the NFL because they didn't have that mental to do that extra work like one of my good friends um, Eddie Lacy, I, I will point him out because he was a huge star in high school. He was a even mm -hmm. bigger star in college with Alabama. And then when he went to the Packers, he was good for a little bit, but then his age kind of started catching up with him. And so he couldn't just, he didn't have that faster metabolism that, you know, and he, he's from the South. My boy likes mm -hmm. to eat, you know? And so he started putting on weight and started, you know, and it just like really hit him because he honestly like, I mean, a lot of people know this about him. He didn't really love football like that. And he was just naturally really good and saw it as a way out. And so mm -hmm. he played football, but he his mental wasn't there to do the grind that, you know, honestly can take players from like an average status or even him being this great player, 
but the longevity part of it isn't there if your mental isn't there. So I think it's more of like not the working out part as much as it's just like your mental being able to survive in this business because it is not a nice business. You know, I have friends that just got in the league like a year or two ago and they're just like, Ooh, like this, this is like no joke. Like this, this part of it where you have to deal with like the front office and they're, you know, scanless to you and doing this that, and the third and telling you one day that they really want you on the team. So then you don't sign with this other team and then they cut you the next day. Now the other team that you, that wanted you already picked somebody else up and now you out of a job, you know, like that part of it is, is all mental. And I think the difference is not the workouts. It's the, the mental. And I think what we see with these younger kids being on TikTok or being like looking immature and stuff like that is I think he thinks that they're, or I think that we think that their mental isn't there all the time. Cause we're like, mm -hmm. is this kid just clowning around all the time? Does right. he even have meant what it takes to have a good long career? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what this makes me think of a little bit is Zion Williamson. Obviously he just finished his rookie year, but we saw him with those injuries, people talking about the weight gain. And I know we talked on our live show before, um, like, is this, is he going to finally have a wake up call yeah. where he gets into shape and he starts taking it more seriously? And I guess we have yet to find out if that's going to be the case. We'll see once the season starts again. But um, I mean, that's kind of an interest. This, this tweet could be especially pertinent to Zion's situation if he comes back and isn't ready to go and isn't able to uh, keep up with the players around him. So yeah. mm -hmm. just an interesting uh, conversation subject to talk about. But you guys, let's wrap up Need to Know News. And Jackie, can you take us into the post-up? Yes, yes, yes. This is the post up. We are still in a pandemic edition. Um, like we've been talking about, it's official. We're gearing up for the NBA season. I can't say that I'm excited because I haven't had enough rest time as a fan. So I can imagine how these guys are feeling. But I do understand that a lot of them have to hype themselves up. Like Britt just said, a lot of it is mental. So I don't trip when people figure out a way to kind of get themselves mentally prepared in the game. That is including James Harden. He is trying to get himself hyped up, and he posted this to Twitter. Um, and it basically says, it was made for me. You can't compare me because I am the realist. I understand why a lot of people were like, what does that mean? I'm the realist. Like, what are you trying to say here? I actually don't care, though, because, again, I think you're trying to hype yourself up even though I don't understand what he's trying to say. He's trying to hype himself up. But like I said, a lot of us didn't understand. This Twitter user definitely does not understand. He says, why on earth would you post a pic where you got hella swamp ass on full display? I didn't read that right the first time I read it. I was like, what's a swamp ass? But now I know what he means. He's got the full wet booty. I know Britt has something to say because this is not the first time. James Harden's booty has made it into the live. So, <laughs> listen, <laughs> if, if you really think that James Harden is worried about a little sweat on his butt when he is now known as James Harden? Like, we saw his whole poopy butt, and you really think he's worried about a little sweat? Come on, my guy. My guy oh is not worried God. about his sweaty booty cheeks when we already <laughs> saw his crappy booty cheeks, okay? <laughs> oh, no. Britt is never going to let him live that down. There's never going to come a time where <laughs> this is not that. This man's going to be 90 years old, and Britt's going to go <laughs> going on, James Chardon. <laughs> you know, I need to stop, my... though, because I'm going to get so, – something's going to happen to me, and I'm going to be, like, in a pl public place, and that's going to happen to me. I'll be right place. there. I, yep. I need to stop saying something. I'm sorry, yep. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we talked about that, I think, on one of our first live shows as a whole crew. Um, it was w the first time that all four of us were together, or it was in that first week, at least. We talked about James Chardon, and that was honestly the worst, the worst conversation I it ever was. had with you guys. I hated everything about it. I wish that James would go see a gastroenterologist or something because he's got some issues going on down there. The guy needs to see a doctor, I think. Oh, my God. Okay, we are going to move on to this next tweet now. <laughs> that talks more about, you know, gets it off of his booty, gets it onto his defense. He says, no defense, cherry-picking, looking ass. You'll never get a ring, homeboy. One thing all the greats have in common was that they were amazing leaders. They made everyone around them better, regardless of who was brought in, become a better leader leader teammate hashtag goal 2021 um so i think that hey Britt, how you doing girl 
<laughs> I think that's a, that's a good point. Um, but again, I'm not going to take away from what James Harden is doing because I think everyone understands that, all right, we're not getting the break that we want. It's time to get back into game mode. I'm all for this tweet, even though a lot of people are not for this tweet. But now we're just going to move on because like we talked about, Cam did it. He gave me my birthday present. I got every single birthday present that I wanted, and that included Cam Newton coming through last night and winning for the Patriots. I'm not a Patriot fan. I just need to make sure everybody knows that. It's just that Cam Newton is there now. He ended up rushing for two touchdowns. He was 27 for 35, passed for 274 yards, and this is the most important part, no interceptions. Not one interception did he throw. His first rushing touchdown was a really big deal because that was the first time this entire season – let that marinate, this entire season that the Patriots have scored in the first quarter. That is a horrible stat. So I was really excited for the Patriots. Um, a lot of people were excited for the Patriots, including Patriots fans. But, of course, there were haters everywhere. Some of you actually took to our Instagram page to hate. Um, but, you know, it's just it's, – it's, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Because if they had lost to the Jets, everybody would have clowned and said, oh, y'all can't beat – an 0 and 8 team at that time. And then we beat the Jets, or they beat the Jets, and now it's like, oh, who cares? You beat the Jets. Y'all can't give this man a break at all. But Cam needs to go ahead and block out the noise. We've talked about that before. LeBron James is going to help him do that. LeBron James posted this tweet, um, basically shouting him out, said, hell of a game, Cam Newton, big time, all night long, game winning drive to add on to it. So I thought that was great. I think that one of the things I've talked about over and over again, and one of his biggest detriments is that he is has a hard time shutting out the noise. So I was really appreciative when I saw King James send him this post. But of course, people aren't giving him any credit for beating the Jets. Um, so this one says, we're not gassing up Cam Newton for having a game-winning drive against a winless team. Yes, we are. I understand your point, but yes, we are. Every journey starts with a single step. They had one, lost what? Four games going into this this game. If they would have lost again, it would have been worse. So now at least they're they're on a one game win streak. That's a good thing. And then of course somebody had to just bring their LeBron hater in and said LeBron only likes him because he's black. That's probably not the only reason. But if that was the reason, so what? I mean, I'm rooting for everybody black, so whatever. Um, so again, I just want to go ahead and say congratulations to Cam Newton for getting over this hump. You need to maintain that. But this next one is going to be hard for me not to laugh, so I'm just going to say it slowly. Because you guys might remember Glenn Big Baby Davis. Um, he played for the Celtics, Orlando Magic, and the Clippers before going to play ball in Canada. I was actually on the panel with um, Big Baby Davis on the Mike and Donnie show on Fox Soul, and I can tell you firsthand that man is a lot to handle. And this jersey is proving that he is still a lot to handle. I know whoever posted this did so to say, oh, Big Baby Davis has still got it. But that's not the message I got. So I'm going to let y'all take a look at this video and tell me what message you get. Let's go. Literally. <laughs> that jersey. Who, who, who gave that man that jersey? I feel bad for him. What? <laughs> you feel bad for him? You feel that that jersey is in the middle of the struggle of its life and you feel bad for Big Baby Davis. That jersey is never going to be the same again ever. It cannot be it's worn again. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was so Zion so Williamson. Zion okay. Williamson. This right. is your future if you don't get your yes. stuff together. It's funny you say that, Britt, because there's a tweet coming up. I'm going to show you some of the tweets that we got. Um, Leo, can you post, uh, shoot up the next tweet? Because some of these are cute. Well, there's only two of them, but both of them are cute. Because apparently that basketball court is actually kind of small, too. I didn't notice that one. Are those tweets in there, Leo? Okay, maybe they're not in there. But one of the tweets did say that, Britt. One of the tweets said that they were going to call... They were going to show this video to their kid and say that this was Zion in his prime. So, Britt, you're absolutely right. That was actually a thing. Um, and then another person actually said, if we could show the video one more time, because I didn't notice this, but he was like, what kind of court is this? Because Big Baby took two steps and was on the other side of the court. I don't know if you saw that. Okay, so he gets this basket. Now watch. He's on the other side of the court right now. What kind of court is this? 
It's the same it's size like a, as the jersey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's because they go sideways so technically there's like three games being played on one court but this way so it's this length oh. of a it's this length of a court it's not this length of a court the court oh, is okay this length of the yeah. okay i was like that's that's a that's a medium court just like that jersey that's it ridiculous <laughs> all right let's go down in, in junior high school <laughs> i was gonna say i remember that in junior high but yeah he's too big He's too big. It's well, in the he name, has a big baby. High jersey on, so I'm just saying. Yeah, he, so technically, he's coordinated. I see what you did there, Brent. Yes. Brent, he's coordinated. He's coordinate. Coordinate. Got to coordinate. Got to coordinate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please watch Boomerang so you know what we're talking about. Yes. <laughs> I just forgot Wait, that. You, okay. Yes. You cut out. You know what? Like, like, you still have cut you out. Have you ever heard that it's phrase? Fine, have you ever heard that phrase? I've got, you've got to coordinate. You've got to coordinate. You've never heard that. Okay, so Boomerang is now on your watch list because yes, yeah. <laughs> watch it. So you, know we're talking about. you don't know what we're talking about. I yeah, actually but... quote that all the time. Gold Star Marcus too. dinner was young. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all, all right. right, I'll watch it. <laughs> all right, so let's go down memory lane again because some of you might not even remember when the Hornets left Charlotte and became the New Orleans Hornets. Not the Pelicans, the Hornets in 2002. Um, and then, of course, they became, I think they became the Pelicans in 2013 or something like that. But at that time, David West started his career with the Hornets in 2002. He ended up retiring from Golden State in 2018. Um, but here's the thing. David West was 6'9", 250 pounds. Josh Hart is 6'5", 215 pounds. I just need you to keep that in mind as you look at this next tweet because this is apparently the reason why. Um, David West said, I tried to post up jo Josh Hart a couple times and I couldn't post him up. Literally, during the game, I'm telling myself, yo, if you can't move this Duke cat, you got to go. It's time. <laughs> so Josh Hart is the reason why David West decided to retire, which I think is hilarious. I don't really have anything else for that, but just the fact that some little scrawny guy is just the reason that you retired is funny to me. I wouldn't have said that out loud. I would have kept that, I would have taken that to my grave. <laughs> I, would have not have, I would not have said that, but that's just me. Um, we also talked about several times about these new city jerseys that have come out. There's been, you know, love and hate on both of those. I have to say the 76ers have one of my favorites. They just released their new jersey their city jersey. I love this. I, it could yeah. be just me. So I'm just going to go to the pet. ladies. What do you think? I love this. I love this city I jersey. I like it too. I like it too. Britt, I think what it's do you cool. Think? And I, mm -hmm. all, oh, all of the reactions on online that I saw were so negative about these jerseys, but I thought they looked really cool. I think they're neat. So I'm surprised that people were so like critical of them. Yeah, I love it. I Britt, like what, what do you think? I like them. The only thing I don't like is the top of the shorts. It has the little bell, like in the middle above. I don't know. It's just like weird. Mm. I don't like that part. There's a bell on the top like, of the shorts. It's like it looks like a bell at the top of the shorts. Am I tripping or I am I not tripping? I don't know if I noticed a can bell at the top of the shorts. Leo, can you can you throw it back up? Yeah, okay, it's like a bell. <laughs> oh, oh, right in the. I see. I see. And it's right above the, you know, where the you know, so I just think it's like weird. <laughs> I don't like the bell, like ding dong, ding dong, and it's literally. You right hope above that it makes the, that sound. You hope that it makes that sound. <laughs> if it doesn't make that sound, that's a whole another story for another day. But um, at the same time, <laughs> um, like Devin said, it is getting mixed reviews. A lot of people just don't like it. Um, this first tweet. I, I think he's on the right track. Um, this one first tweet was like, it says, trust the process in the lines. I don't, can we, yeah. So do you see that? The, this Twitter yeah. user says that that's, that's kind of hidden in there. It says, trust the process. I like that. Look, little hidden uh, messages in there. I, I actually really like that. Um, but this be great if they get rid of um, Joel Embiid. <laughs> very <laughs> true. Very, very, very true. Won't. That means Ooh, they're getting rid of Ben yeah. Simmons then, but and they have Ben Simmons yeah, wearing the jersey. See, see True. this is confusing now. 
<laughs> All right, so look at the dark mind of this person, though. This person says, damn, these jerseys are not making the playoffs. Um, ch charcoal outlines for a dead body or abandoned house, WTF. So he does not see the trust your, the process. He sees chalk outlines. This person watches a lot of crime television, just like me, I can tell. But I actually think overall, it's a good... I love it. I think it looks really good. I always like, you know, the black jerseys with the hint of color in there. So, so this is this is one of my favorites so far. So, okay, I think we are we agree. It's it's a it's a it's okay. It's one of the better ones we've seen. It's okay. All right, here we go. This one's gonna be fun because I've said it before and I will say it again. I said it with James Harden. I'm gonna say it again here with Tyler Hero. You have to be a little bit cocky to play this game. You can't be humble, like super humble, because you'll get ran through. You have to believe that you're the best person on the court. True or not, you have to believe it. That being said, I don't know how I feel about Tyler Hero working out in this shirt. I, I just don't know. Y'all see that? That is his shirt where he did the, the funky Elvis. It's the funky yeah. Elvis lip thing. Remember? Remember? Oh, no. The knee he's, I don't he's, like that. He's working out it. by himself with him. What? Why, Britt? Tell mm -hmm. me why. <laughs> Let, me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because he got real humbled after he made this face. So I said that this is actually a what we not going to do moment. Like, oh, what would Jesus do? He's wearing the shirt to remind himself that I need to keep putting the work in. I need to not get cocky in this moment. And he wore it while he's working out. If he just wore it to the club, yes. But wearing it while you're working out is literally saying, okay, learn my lesson. I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to get this work in. I'm going to come back next year for revenge season. That's how I saw it. So get it, Tyler, because I loved every bit of it. Okay. I else read it the totally different way that he just like, oh, I did. I, he knows he lost. He knows he got humbled in that moment. So why would he wear that shirt thinking like, oh, yeah, I'm better than everybody. I totally think he's wearing it. To remind himself to not get complacent, to not get humble in a moment, and to keep grinding. All right, Devin, are you on team? This is his his motivational shirt, or are you on team? What the hell are you doing, Tyler Hero? Which which team are you on? I'm on team. I'm on team. What the hell are you doing, Tyler Hero? I like <laughs> Britt's optimistic perspective. I think that the narrative that she has created is really wonderful. But I just think that he probably thinks that he like that was like a really strong, dope moment for him. And then so he puts it on his shirt and he wears the shirt. I don't think he's using it as a reminder of like the humility that you have to have. And like, right. I don't know. To me, I just think it seems a little bit weird. It's a little bit awkward. I really did not like when he made that face to begin with with when that yeah. happened I was mortified on his behalf and I got a lot of hate for that when I posted a video about it on the fumble but I just didn't like it so I don't really want to see him wearing his face on a shirt well he's not threatening whether you're, whether you're making that little lip or not you're just not threatening and that's like a threatening kind of little face he was trying to make and it was like a huge fail in my opinion um, I get what Britt's saying though and like I said since I always like people to kind of hype themselves up I, I'm gonna I guess I'm just going to fall right in the middle. But um, one Twitter user, he, he basically doesn't like it at all. He thinks we're just giving, giving Tyler Hero too much credit. We're giving him, you know, Britt said, it's a Jesus moment. Come to Jesus moment. Um, this one Twitter user was like, why are we, um, why the TF do people think this dude is the second coming of Jesus Christ? He got a response to that, which I actually kind of like, because again, it's like he is a talented young 19 year old. He's got swag. I totally disagree with that. Tyler Hero has no swag, but he tries. Um, the league loves players with personality. It thrives off that. Why you hating? I agree with that. I agree with that. Tyler Hero, he is fun to watch, regardless of what I think about his little jacked up Elvis face. He is fun to watch. Um, so I, I, I get that, and he's very talented, but this is the shirt I want, and this Twitter user agrees. He says, I need this shirt. I don't know if I can get that made because it's blurry, so I would have to get it, you know, cleared up. But I would wear that shirt <laughs> really quick. But, you know, that's just me. I'm, I guess I'm going to fall in the middle. Like, yes, hype yourself up at all costs. You know, if you're working out by yourself, maybe you just need your, you know, that that – picture on your shirt I, I guess I, I don't know um this next one though is hilarious to me because patience is a virtue so let me set this scenario up for you there's this guy he's out he wants to do some batting practice but his somebody is driving his car away and he wants them to drive the car 
from away from behind the fence. He doesn't want his car, his personal car, he doesn't want it behind the fence. He's like, oh, screw it, guy's taking too long, and this is what happens. Remember, guys, patience is a virtue. Tell him to go. See, should have just waited. Should have just waited. Oh no! Oh no! No! no. Oh. Oh. Did you hear it? <laughs> Did you hear it? <laughs> that was his car. And he's like, "Why would you stop right? There? Why wouldn't you wait? Why didn't you wait?" That was. <laughs> oh my god! All you had to do is like, wow. That was so loud. <laughs> now he needs to be delivered <laughs> to his teddy bear. I'm gonna pray for him. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh that hard, but dude literally said at the beginning of the video, he's like, "All right, come on. He's taking too long. All he had to do was wait. That's that's it." And he did it. And yeah, now he's got to call. Like he was right. moving when he right before he bat batted. Like what? Yep. That is. Uh -uh. Yep. Uh uh. My God. And you got a video yep. of it. You don't have to pay for that window. Yep. <laughs> Because all you had to do was wait. Now you got to call your insurance company because you know that whatever that hit is shattered. Whether it was a back window, front window, it is gone. So, Watch say it again. The lesson for was driving, driving the car didn't get hit in the face or like have glass shattered over on these. Oh, yeah. Woo. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But yeah, okay, so we got the lesson. Patience is a virtue. All right, so now let's get to my favorite part of the post-up because you know we went through this whole thing without this. You guys know I love the kids. The kids are everything to me. So we're going to keep that same energy. We're going to end this post-up with this fantastic little one. Um, he is the cutest kid I have seen. I'm going to start a list from now on of the cutest kids we have on the post-up. It's from today. I know we've had cute kids before, but from today on, this kid is number one on my list so far because he's such a professional already. I can't wait to see him kick someone out of a game one day. So take a look at this. This kid he is the cutest. Oh, the hands on the hips. I love it. Right. <laughs> he looks just like a little mini real ref. He is so <laughs> cute. I love him so, so much already. He's definitely my favorite. Um, I told y'all he was going to kick somebody. Right? I told you he was probably going to kick somebody out of a game one day. Look at this uh, Twitter user who says exactly that, basically, because... Devin, you called it out. It's that little hip stance. He says, this is the yep. stance right before you about to get your last warning or a technical coming right up. That's that, like, we've seen the ref do it. Yep. He is so cute. <laughs> and I love, I that love he it. He has the whistle in his mouth already. He yes. Like, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So cute. Yeah. I love that. He's, He's so doing the little now. count. Yeah. He's so cute now. Wait, wait till he calls something against your favorite team or your favorite player. Right. Wait. Wait, right, yeah, and then somebody's going, going. <laughs> right? I'm probably going to be cursing the ref, like, this is the worst ref right. ever, and somebody's going to be like, uh-uh, remember this video? You said right. he was cute. <laughs> you encouraged his career. <laughs> right, exactly. All right, but that is all I have for the post-up. Um, so I guess I'll just go right into this what we not going to do moment, close it out, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, do it again, it's all about Cam for me today. If you guys not noticed this, I, I wanted this to happen so bad, so I'm really proud of Cam. Um, I thought he looked really good. There were some moments that he didn't look so great, but there was a point, I think up until halftime, he was like 17 for 18, so he had completed 17 out of 18 passes. I thought that was great. There was a deep pass that he could have completed. It was barely overthrown, but he was under pressure at that time. The defense could have helped out a lot because let's not forget that – the Jets are the lowest scoring team in the NFL, but yet they managed to put up 27 points on the Patriots. That's not a good thing. So I was excited to see this. There was definitely an improvement in um, Cam's passing game, which I think we all were hoping for. So reporters asked him about it after the game. They said, hey, you know what? How did this come about? What brought about this change that you looked a little bit more confident in your passing game? And he said, he just called it like it was. He said, quote, I'm getting tired of sucking. Simple. 
as a competitor, you know what your standard is, taking pride in your way, that is what it comes down to. So I can respect that, but again, it is kind of, you do have to understand that there were, there's a lot of not so good parts to the Patriots right now because we're talking about a team that can barely score and, and Joe Flacco looked really good. He scored three touchdown passes and he had 262 passing yards. Um, like I said, they made some costly mistakes. So I don't want us to just put this all on Cam Newton because we are used to seeing a defense that literally helps keep the Patriots in the game. They help give Tom Brady more moments. If they should get down, the defense kind of holds, holds the line. Um, and they're just not doing that right now. So we are seeing a whole new possibility of a whole new upgrade across the board. Um, so it's not just a Cam Newton problem. Like both of Cam Newton's touchdowns were rushing. He didn't throw for any touchdown passes. He's only thrown for two touchdown passes this entire season. So obviously that is a little bit concerning. But again, Cam Newton is my only specific – he's not my only concern for the Patriots. Um, I still – see, I want Cam Newton to play a very long career. I want him to play as long as he wants to, but I still see flashes of him not being able to get out of his head. I still see flashes of him having a bad series and going out the next series, and he's still living in that moment in his head. This is not that league you can do that. You have to have an amazing short-term memory. So I, the mistakes are getting him in a rut, and I don't like that. So what we're not going to do is just blame this all on Cam Newton. We also, what we're not going to do is pretend like everybody's job in New England is not at stake right now because nobody's looking that great. That's including Julian Edelman. Now, to be fair, he is 34. Um, he did have that uh, knee injury last month, and he hasn't really looked right since he came back from that. But he's caught just eight of the 21 passes thrown his way, just eight. Now, some of those you can question, you know, were they catchable or not. But I didn't look at every single one of them, but most of them were catchable, and he has not had a touchdown reception in almost 11 months. So, yes, this is, this is a total team problem. Um, but stop saying that they shouldn't celebrate. They definitely should celebrate because what we're not going to do is pretend that they would have been in a five-game losing streak to the Jets. You can't, you can't come back from that. That's a hard thing to come back from mentally if you are another team if you can't beat the Jets, when eight other teams have done it, the, the Jets before last night were 0-8, they're 0-9 now. You can't live that down. That's hard to come back from mentally as a quarterback, mentally as a team. So they had to win this game. Let them have this moment because every journey starts with a single step. So what we're not going to do is not let them have this moment. And they broke their losing streak, which is a big deal. I'm excited for uh, Cam Newton. Hopefully he can keep the same energy, you know, going into the upcoming weeks. But it's a, it's a first step, guys. Let them have this moment. Stop throwing all this shade. It's not necessary. A win is a win. Good job, Cam. Good job, Patriots. And that's all I got for what we're not going to do, except for saying what we're not going to do is keep hating. Stop hating. That's all we got. All right, Devin, let me get you up on that. Now, go ahead, Britt. Well, I wanted to say they need to remember Gilmore didn't play yesterday either. Like, he was ruled mm -hmm. out before the game. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's their, mm -hmm. be their best defender on their team. So, chill out, y'all. Yep. Chill out. Yeah, chill all the way out. <laughs> So I don't know. It's it's Brit's it's Brit's call, but I really liked the remix yesterday. It was pretty it. fly. I so. liked it. So it's I the think we're gonna need to get that again. <laughs> All right, because now it's time for Brit's takes. <laughs> Brit's takes. Yes. yes. <laughs> Right, um, we are going to keep that same kind of energy going into Brit's takes because we are talking about my boy Prime Time. So, um, actually, we're talking more about his son. Uh, so, Deion Sanders' son Shador committed to play at Jackson State. Yes, guys, he will be joining his daddy. Um, this is a great moment for the HBCUs. Um, he originally actually was already thinking about um, going to HBCU, he had already committed to Florida Atlantic University, but he took away his verbal commitment there and then decided um, after he was offered on September 24th, I think, um, a scholarship to Jackson State. Again, we've talked about it before, a lot of these top recruits don't even get um, opportunities or get scholarships uh, to these HBCUs because the HBCUs are like, they ain't going to come here, so we're not even going to offer them. So once it was an opportunity and um, Deion Sanders' son was like, hey, I could possibly consider that, 
Yes, they were like, and of course, obviously, we know his daddy is the new head coach over there. And to be fair, Shador is not a scrub at all. He is actually a um, top rated quarterback in the 2021 class. He's ranked 14th in the nation, to be exact, for quarterbacks. Um, he is 35th overall ranked player in the state of Texas. Yes, the high school mecca of call of high school football texas he is the 35th ranked overall player in the state and guess what in three of obviously this season isn't done yet but the last years his freshman sophomore and junior year guess what he did my man team trinity christian won state championships in the state of texas which is huge we talk about all the time high school football is all about texas California is probably a close second when it comes to recruits coming out of California. Um, my high school last year won the state championship, Central High School. So, yes, yes, go alma mater. Um, they were terrible when I was in high school, but they good now. They good, state champions now. But um, mm -hmm. this kid is really, really good, and he actually will become the first four-star recruit to ever attend Jackson State. This is huge. Um, when he was in high school, his dad was actually the offensive coordinator for a little bit while he was in high school. And we know um, Deion Sanders has his, like, prime team, his little Pop Warner team. Um, we all know uh, Snoop has a Pop Warner team. There are, you know, different celebrities and athletes that will have Pop Warner teams, and Deion Sanders had one. So, you know, his sons grew up playing on those teams. His oldest son, Deion Jr., uh, played football for a while. It didn't really work out for him. Um, but this son is, like, the truth. And this moment is so amazing. He actually uh, wrote, uh, posted about, you know, why he decided to go there. And he said, I couldn't pass up an opportunity to help level the playing field and pursue equality for HBCUs. Dad, I got your back. And I thought this was amazing. Usually I am not for um, the father-son combo because I am a Clippers fan and I had to see the Austin Rivers and Doc Rivers scenario. Um, Doc Rivers obviously coming to the Clippers after, you know, winning a championship with the Celtics and stuff like that and having, you know, being known as this great head coach and then coming to the Clippers and then his son who was being passed around from at the time the D-League, which is now known as the G-League, passed around through the D-League, gets just basically placed on the Clippers because his daddy was the coach and then Everybody talked negatively about, you know, the situation because he basically is only on the team because his dad. Obviously, since then, Austin Rivers has proven himself as a player. He's a gritty player. I remember everybody remembers the picture of him with a busted, bloody eyeball because he got elbowed in the eye, but he didn't want to leave the game because the Clippers were literally had nobody else playing at the time because this is when everybody had gotten hurt in that playoff series. It was a round two series where obviously we ended up losing, but. Austin Rivers ended up proving himself as a player, and obviously now he's playing with the Rockets and stuff like that and doing his thing with whatever he's doing. But he, for a while, was just known as Doc Rivers' son. This situation is not like this at all, so I am totally for Shador joining his dad and being the, you know, first four-star recruit to attend this school. And I really do believe... It's actually Shador that's doing his dad a favor, not his dad doing Shador a favor. Because we all know Shador being, you know, one of the top 14 quarterbacks in the nation has gotten several Power 5 um, scholarship offers. He specifically decided to be one of those players, which we've talked about um, some basketball players, you know, trying to say that they want to commit to HBCUs being one of those players that's going to make a change and make a difference. And I like congratulate both of them. Like Deion Sanders is obviously bringing like a big spotlight on an HBCU and, you know, trying to help them get televised games and this, that, and the third. And then now that his son has decided to go there and attend and attend the school and play football underneath his dad, I think this is a great, this is like, this is going to be so amazing to see, especially because we have all said stuff about the NCAA and especially these power five schools and what they've been doing to players and how they treat players. And I think this is a trend that should continue. I hope he has many, many successes there because if he does being one of the first and obviously the first four-star recruit to commit to an HBCU on the football side of it, 
that that only leads to bring more people there. If it ends up going terrible and all this bad stuff happens, it's going to be very unfortunate because we're not going to get that moment um, where we're going to start seeing, you know, some of these top college players deciding to go to these HBCUs. But this is going to be the deciding factor right here, this moment. Like the situation with like Lamelo and some of the other athletes that were testing it out to not go to college has now had a wave of kids either not going to college, going to the straight to the G League, going straight to um, or going to a HBCU and stuff like that. This moment, that Lamelo's moment is this moment for football because Shador does have a big spotlight because he is you know known on social media in the football world and stuff like that, and he does have a dad that's this legend. You know, he is on that same kind of you know, track as LaMelo Ball was for, you know, basketball in a football way. So I think this could be awesome. I like wish him all the best of luck. I don't think that this is a situation that's going to be like Doc Rivers and Austin Rivers, because I do think these people are actually equally yoked. I think the son is actually super talented. I think the dad, obviously, we know Deion Sanders, and this is not this is his first time coaching at a college level, but he's been coaching Pop Warner in high school football for a while. So I think this is amazing. Uh, we have some time. So I'll go to Jackie. Jackie, what were your um, thoughts uh, when you heard that Shador Sanders will be joining his dad um, at Jackson State? Um, all of them were like super uh, happy thoughts. Like, first and foremost, it's like, like, okay, the, like, the relationship that the two of them must have is amazing. Um, because he just like you said, he's doing his dad a favor. And they, I'm sure they've sat down and talked about this before. I'm sure that Dion has instilled in him the importance of HBCUs before, but ultimately it's still his decision. And I, from what I know of Dion, he would have supported his son going wherever he wanted to go, doing whatever he wanted to do. So his son saying, hey, dad, you know, I got you. I understand that this is going to be a big moment, not just for you, but for HBCUs, not, and not just this HBCU. This means a lot for all HBCUs when somebody makes a decision to go to an historically black university. So it's just, it, this is just one of those moments in time where you go, oh my God, this could really happen. You know what I mean? It's just because I've always been the one to, you know, try to push for HBCUs. I actually wanted to go to an HBCU, but I didn't get a full ride scholarship to an HBCU. So I went to where the money was. Um, but yeah, that's like you said, you like, you know, a lot of HBCUs didn't, weren't giving out scholarships or they were giving partial scholarships. But I think when, when you get a big name like this, then you're going to get more eyes on you. When you get more eyes on you, that'll equal more revenue. So hopefully this will open doors. So scholarships are available for other people who want to go to an HBCU, not just academically or for sports, but also academically. So I just think that this is a huge, huge hash mark in the win column. For HBCUs, I'm very proud of the Sanders family for taking this step. And, and I love how Dion just announced, made this whole announcement in big fashion, because I know everything he does yeah. there is going to be big. So I'm just, I'm just, it's just one of those moments where I have to just take a deep breath and be like, oh my God, this is really happening. And so I'm over the moon. I'm excited about it. And I'm very proud of the father-son relationship that the two of them not only have, but they're displaying for the world to see. I think it's a big moment. Yes. Um, Devin, I'm going to go to you really quick since we still have a few minutes. Um, now, we saw guys like uh, who we all know and love now, Shannon Sharp, who we get a lot of our little memes or whatever from. Um, he went to an HBCU as well. Um, and there were several other like big stars that ended up going to the NFL that came from HBCUs. Do you think that social media is actually helping this push to get these younger kids into the idea of going to HBCUs because this isn't the first time that we've seen, you know, big players go to HBCUs, but is it do you think that this era of social media is actually benefiting the HBCUs because you're seeing kids like Shador make announcements on social media and other people are getting to see it? Yeah, I think that it's it's a two part thing. I think social media is definitely shedding light on the different opportunities people can have by going to an HBCU. So it's putting them more on the map. And um, I think it's it's definitely helping. But I also think that uh, athletes are just getting fed up with the NCAA in general. And so they're looking for, you know, they're not necessarily motivated to just go to the same universities. They're like, might as well explore yeah. what's out there. Um, go to an HBCU. See you put that you know college even more on the map. I think that that definitely is helping the situation. So I think that it's it's both things. There's less pressure to go to these different um, you know 
top schools for athletics uh, just because people are so getting so fed up with the NCAA as a whole. So yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's both things, but I think it's very exciting. And I think uh, what you and Jackie were saying about um, this opportunity and the father son duo, I think that everything about it can only be positive. And I think it'll be exciting to see what happens moving forward. Yeah. And before I get out of here, I did have like a quick message to the HBCUs. You guys give these top five and four star recruits scholarships. Mm -hmm. The same thing, what happened with Shador, he was not asked or not um, offered a scholarship from Jackson State. He literally said he had wanted to go to HBCU and then HBCU started approaching him. A lot of times HBCUs believe that those players are out of there, you know, like, oh, they're just too good for us and like whatever. Honey, fake, like I was told a long time ago by a PR agent, fake it till you make it. You have mm -hmm. to believe that you're the crap or else nobody else will. So go, the worst they could, they could say is no and go with another school. But a lot of times the opportunity was never laid out for them. They never had an option to say, hey, I'm going to pick this school. Give them those opportunities, provide those scholarship offers to them and let just leave it on the table. Let them say yes or no. But at least you guys need to start believing that you guys deserve to be in the same rankings as these power five schools and start offering these kids scholarships. Because as you can see in this moment, kids are going to start wanting to go to HBCUs and they want different opportunities. Like Devin said, they're sick and tired of what the NCAA and those power five schools are providing for them. They want the opportunity to go to your schools, give them the scholarships. Just like Jackie said, she wanted to go to HBCU. She didn't have a scholarship, which is why she didn't go. That is the same exact thing that is happening with a lot of these football and basketball players. They don't mind going to HBCUs, but y'all ain't offering them scholarships. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing to change. And I think we'll start seeing, you know, a lot of these kids start going in um, this new direction. And I hope it pans out very well. But that is it for Britt's take today. Thank you so much, Britt. And uh, <laughs> love that Britt is still full screen. I'll do the outro. I think Britt, you can just yell at <laughs> Oh I was like waiting for all of us to come back on. I was just mm -hmm. <laughs> holding there for a little too any long. Minute. Um, anyway, you guys, what, Jackie? I said any minute. That's why we were just like, any second now. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, if y'all want me to continue, I think Leo right. really liked the bell. <laughs> I got you, Leo. I'll talk all day. <laughs> Leo was like, I wanted to go to an HBCU. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, all right, you guys, let's wrap up our show. We'll be back at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time tomorrow. As usual, subscribe, tap the bell so you know exactly when we're going live. Wash your hands, wear a mask, and do something nice for somebody else today. If it makes them feel good and it makes you feel good, parting wisdom for the show. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bye, everyone. Make sure you coordinate. 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 You got to coordinate. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>